Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. We're also here with the beautiful Swedish model slash Great Dane, <laughs> Sunshine. She's the best. But she's in her dog bed. She's probably yeah. not going to move a whole lot. But no. she's with us. It's a girl party. It is a girl party. We're here to have fun and talk about Vanderpump Rules. Baby. Yes, bitch. Before we get into it, we just have to remind you to please hide your wife and hide your kids. <laughs> this is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have stupid opinions and we're not going to apologize for them. So if you're so sorry, you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby. But if you're down to party and have some fun and talk VPR, welcome to this dumpster yeah and if you are down and ready to party be sure to follow us on the instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe that's where the real party's at y'all um and finally if you are watching on youtube please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe every little thing you do helps us to grow this community and so thank you in advance thank you okay let's get into it before we talk this episode are there any thoughts that you have about vpr i actually didn't mind brock and sheena this episode to be honest like normally they've been bothering me they're annoying i think brock especially but this episode i'm like oh i mean i don't mind you i mean you're still unlikable still annoying but i didn't mind them okay yeah that's interesting because i still can't stand them <laughs> My major takeaway is like, I really don't like Lala, mm. which is unfortunate because they came into this season kind of hopeful, especially off the season 11 yeah. reunion and how she was standing for Ariana. But like the way she made James having a bit of an emotional breakdown and like expressing his vulnerability about Graham slash hippie about herself mm -hmm. and her being a mother and about how we never want to have a man be first. Like, it was just crazy to me. Yeah. It's like you have to insert yourself into every scene. Why? I know. It's because she's bitter. I don't know why. I'm like, why do you have to be, like, opinionated? Like, you're not this, like, enlightened person just because you're five years sober. Like, congrats, but mm -hmm. chill out a little bit. Yes. Kind of annoying. It is annoying. And um, I'm getting irritated with it. And then I sent you that meme that I saw. Yes. It's, it's got pictures of Lala pointing at Sandoval, screaming at him, a picture of Sheena pointing at Sandoval, screaming at him, and then the picture of Ariana pointing at Sandoval, screaming at him. And then somebody's asking the question, like, why is it okay for Sheena and Lala to scream at Sandoval? But when Ariana does it, like, oh, she's toxic mm -hmm. or when is she going to get some therapy when is she going to move out of the house yes i thought that was pretty interesting oh yeah i posted it on our ig oh you because i'm like that's based as fuck very insightful because it's like come on why are we dogging on ariana for expressing her anger and oh she's so mean and terrible and abusive but then sheena's literally screaming at right. sandoval's face and same thing with lala she's been doing it all season so and don't get me wrong like he deserves to be Toast. screamed at yeah but most of all, by Ariana. Yeah. Ari There's nothing wrong. In fact, I don't blame Ariana for screaming at him. But yeah. I'm like, these women. Ooh, I know. I guess Lala was up on her Amazon Live this week. What? Yeah. And somebody asked her about what she thinks of the backlash that she's getting for her portrayal this season. And she actually started crying. What? And she's like, I don't read the comments. I don't read the posts because... I do not regret the way that I acted this season, but I really don't want people calling out how silly and stupid I have been. And she's crying. She's like, I'm a real person. This is my real life. I can't spend my time reading all of this toxic bullshit. I'm like, okay, what? But like, you've been on a show for how long? Mm -hmm. Like years. I mean, this is just what it is. Like, granted, some people are cruel on the internet. I totally get that. Like, don't pay attention to the trolls. But 
the same time, I'm like, I don't feel bad for you. You're in the public eye. And Lala, you're very cruel and hypocritical yeah. and toxic and screaming yeah. at people and being aggressive. 100%. But you can't handle it when you're getting a little bit of that back at you via backlash. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. The other little tidbit that I saw on the internet was about Ariana. I guess she was at some sort of a, an event mm -hmm. and she was being asked questions and they asked her about whether she was going to return for season 12. And of course, I have mentioned on this podcast, we have had conversations mm -hmm. in which I opined that maybe she's not going to be coming back. Mm. Because if she can continue to get lucrative brand deals and maybe other shows, like why would she want to come back to yeah. VPR? Um, and her response apparently was that she would only come back to VPR if she could be her authentic self. And if they could like shoot scenes have experiences that were authentic, <gasps> which provides some subtext, mm -hmm. which makes it sound like maybe it wasn't so authentic in this season. And also, like, was she forced to go to all these parties, to all these events, to all these things at Tom Tom, to all these dumb things at James's or the beach? Because if she didn't, she was going to lose her job. Mm. Well, I have been feeling like this whole season... That was what I was going to mention earlier in my hot take, and I forgot. But all of the editing in every episode mm -hmm. feels very, like, patched together. Like, they're obviously putting together a narrative. We've kind of talked about it. Like, maybe they thought Raquel, Rachel was going to come back. And so now they had to do, like, you know, plan B's storyline for the right. season. But, like, all of the editing is so weird sometimes. And I'm just like, okay, I feel like we're faking a lot mm -hmm. in the show. And I know Bravo is like notorious for that. A lot of it is like right. very produced. And that's kind know. of the allure. I don't juxtapose it with The Valley though. Well, uh, yeah. The Valley feels like old school reality TV yes. circa 2008, 2010. Yes, it's lit. The Valley is actually really entertaining. Is it really the same production company producing mm. both shows? Or is it different? Because they feel very different. They do feel very different. Because um, The Valley does feel very authentic even though some of the characters on there are trying to produce themselves mm -hmm. they're not hiding shit no. so it's very entertaining yeah interesting oh, yeah i thought it was interesting so we'll yeah. see if ariana comes back do we want oh, her God. to come back i know that lala had referred to her as a wet noodle who kind of mm -hmm. doesn't bring a whole lot to the show and from an objective standpoint i can kind of see what she means yeah because Ariana has never really been at the forefront of storylines. Sure. But I don't know. I'd like her to come back. Me too. Especially if she can be her real self mm -hmm. I in her new her house mad. with her new me. Yeah. Who's handsome, by the way. He is handsome. Although I hear that he does not want to film. Like he doesn't want any part of this bullshit. Even though he's on FaceTime in this episode? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. I'm sure once Bravo comes in with the checks and is like, well, dude, we can pay you X amount of money. He's going to be like, oh, I'll film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure he will. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. We'll definitely be watching. All right. Let's get into this episode. We're in season 11 episode. I want to say 12 or 13. 13. Entitled, entitled Jack's Attack. Jack's Attack. Oh, Which yeah. I mean, I was expecting some craziness with Jax. No. And it was very wet noodle yeah <laughs> it was yeah. very boring wah, but wah. we'll get into it we start with james and Allie at their house and Jax shows up to talk about hosting brunch i think at sir right he's hosting it there mm -hmm. and i don't know why he's hosting it well he has been asking both james and guillermo at sir oh. to host an event like he's trying oh. to get back into sir for whatever reason because he's poor. Back in business. Yes. He's looking for the check. <laughs> he needs money. Yes. And we see that in the Valley, too, when we talk about that later. He's totally wanting money. Mm -hmm. But he shows up, and he's talking about, you know, how much they've changed since Sir James kind of talks about it in his talking head. He's like, we've come a long way. I guess they used to be at each other's throats yes. all the time. Back and forth, back and forth, yes. Interesting that they're now kind of trying to be buds. Well, I mean, you had a coked out Jax, <laughs> who was a free radical and out of control. Really? And then you had a super drunk and drugged out James, who was also toxic and a free radical. So they would often butt heads. And it was very chaotic and entertaining really yes well and Jax is 40 something right so yeah james is a little bit younger than him yes so i'm sure they were just quite a bit i think like Jax brothers. is what 44 45 and i think james is like 31 32 shut up so yeah Jax is that old yes oh my yes God. he's the oldest he's not the number one guy in the group but he's the oldest guy in the group that's embarrassing yeah <laughs> why people get older no i'm just like he just acts like 
very immature. Yeah, he does that. So that, that's why I'm saying it's True. embarrassing. Like 45 and you're like, geez. But anyway, so he's chatting with James. Allie's there and she's like, well, I got to go do an astrology reading. Bye. And then this is where Jax and James kind of start talking shit. And Jax is talking shit about Katie. So can you kind mm-hmm. of elaborate on like their history? Because it sounds like Katie fucking hates this dude. Katie does hate Jax because Jax was with Stassi. Stassi was Katie's very best friend. Okay. And so then when Jax cheated on Stassi with Kristen of all people, um, Katie was right there. But I mean, Jax has just done a series of really gross grungy things and Katie rightly thinks he is a piece of shit and he also talked mad shit about Katie she knows it and she doesn't want to have anything to do with him after all these years she's known him for many many years yeah she's seen the shit that he does and she doesn't want any part of it she's moving on I mean fair Mm -hmm. well and Jax is like trying to blame her for the cheating rumors of him cheating on Britney and Katie and her talking heads like um dude it was all over the internet I just said what everybody else is saying online like why are you Right. making me the scapegoat for that when you're a cheating asshole well because in fairness katie did bring it up on camera which is kind of what Kristen did on mm. the valley and so i think that's probably what Jax is really pissed off about it that she had the audacity to mention it while the cameras were rolling and so that he was going to have to contend with it and potentially it embarrassed britney but at the same time i don't care i don't care Cope either harder well, and like the Bravo editors are showing shit from VPR earlier seasons of Jax literally confessing to cheating on Britney, and Britney's like, rotten heel. How many times are we going to have to see that flashback rotten on heel. Vanderpump Rules and on The Valley? I rotten heel. I know. <laughs> like, but he was a piece of shit. Well, yeah. He cheated with Faith. I mean, I mean, he cheated before that, too. He Good cheated Lord. on Stassi. He is a cheater, cheater. Pumpkin eater. Pumpkin eater. (laughs) And he's probably cheating right now. That's why he's getting all mad. Well, there was that photograph Mm -hmm. of him and his PR person. I don't know what her name is. I don't care. And then there were rumors um, and people saying, wow, they look kind of cozy together. Next thing we know, Brittany has unfollowed Jax on Instagram Mm. and has unfollowed that PR person, which was her PR person. Mm. Like the last photo that that PR person had on her IG was of her and Brittany. And so Brittany unfollowed her and Jax. So people are putting two and two together thinking, well, Jax is out here maybe banging the PR person. Totally. That's why he's not banging Brittany. Gross. Uh, so nasty. So anyway, they're going to host brunch and Lisa Vanderpump's going to be there and Jax is all worried about confronting her. And then we bop on over to Sheena and Brock's house where Brittany's at and Brittany mm-hmm. and Sheena are chatting about their husbands because they're BFFs, I guess. Her and Brittany. I don't care. <laughs> the only thing that's entertaining about it is that Sheena kind of breaks down and is like talking about the issues that she's having with Brock. And then we flash over to Brock with his friend. Mm-hmm. And the it, the main issue, it seems like to me, is that Brock has a problem with not being the provider of the house. And he right. has a problem with Sheena being the breadwinner. He wants to take the pressure off of her. Sheena doesn't understand that. She's like, it's so misogynistic. Like, let me just be a bad bitch and provide the money. Like, it's fine. So, yeah, what do you think about all this? Well, actually, up until this point, I've been side-eyeing Brock because I just felt like he was an opportunist yeah. who was out here using Sheena Shea and her fame and her um, money. Mm-hmm. But seeing him talk to his friend, who, by the way, was pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> friend was pretty hot. I see him talking to his friend about how it is important to his identity as a man, as a provider, that he is busy, that he's doing something, that he has goals, that yeah. he has dreams for himself. Like, that's part of his life purpose. And I really believed him in that moment yeah and then we hear sheena talk um to britney but also in the after show and she's like he takes so much off of my plate not just by taking care of my child but like he make he facilitates my podcast he facilitates my business advent my business ventures he does so much for me and because he does we make the money that we make it all goes into one account and yeah it's my llc but he's there with me we're partners he's contributing to that And I thought that was a good point. So I feel for him. Me too. I want him to succeed in whatever he wants to do. But then we see him on the after show talking about wanting to get into television and movies and stuff. He wants the fame. Does he want to act or does he want to be behind the camera? I couldn't really 
tell based on the vibe i don't know i'm like wondering if he's going for like a jason momoa type of thing where i'm like because he's kind of got that like you know build you know he's maybe like oh maybe i could be famous i could be aquaman or some stupid shit like that yeah and i'm just like dude like take your talent elsewhere (laughs) go get a practical career like real estate or something like where you could use your fame Mm -hmm. and actually make like money now instead it's of not the time to... to be a real estate agent in california well, no. with the mansion tax and everything still, <laughs> but you know yeah I mean? find a more conventional right. career but can we all just take a moment and a deep breath all of the heterosexual and bisexual women out there <laughs> as we remember the picture of a young brock davies mm-hmm. out on the farm i like had to stop it and you were and looking you're rewind like, eh. it and pause it i was just like holy fuck that's a handsome man. <laughs> that is a handsome man. Yeah. Probably about, I don't know, 40 pounds thinner or something. Not that he's fat, but he's got muscles and yeah. such. But like when he was young and thin and wiry, yes, God, yes, ma'am, I'm all about it. Do you think he's got a big old dick? I hope that. I hope that for Sheena. A nice big old thick column uh, of a dick. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Probably <laughs> is. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I just thought he was so handsome. Yeah. Oh, I love handsome. a shaved head baby. <laughs> you do. I do. Except your husband. Yeah. He... <laughs> well, except for him. Well, he looks like an egg <laughs> when does. he does. That. You call him the sentient egg. I do. <laughs> That's exactly right. But anyway, I thought it was interesting to kind of learn a little bit more about Sheena and Brock. But honestly, in the grand scheme of things, it's boring AF. Totally. I do not care. <laughs> this is not the Vanderpump Rules content that I'm here for. No. I'm here for the drama. Yeah, they belong more on the valley where like it's a bunch of married couples with kids yeah. and they talk about their problems and that's more interesting. But not on VPR. No. Everybody's a bunch of hoes on Get the show. Get drunk, dry, hump, fight. <laughs> yes. That's what I want. Exactly. That's what I want to see. And then we have Katie and Tom Schwartz go into lunch, which is just kind of like, you know, a little small scene. I loved it. But it was very interesting. The I chemistry. loved it. Yeah. They're talking about Tori, the girl that they're both right. dating. Competitively, mm-hmm. like, let's text her, see who she texts back. She ends up texting Tom Schwartz <laughs> back first. But it was just their rapport together. Right? Because we've seen season after season. Well, we have, honey. We've seen season after season of them fighting and contending against each other and then divorcing. And it was so refreshing to just see them at a table being friends. I know. And there was a little bit low-key chemistry between them. Oh, totally. I think schwartz is looking at this beautiful dime piece that he fucked up with and he's like i hate myself honest Mm. that's my general vibe vibe check my fake psychic prediction that he cries himself to sleep every night because he's like damn i really messed it up with katie and i don't know how to get it back get her back and now he's going to lunch with her and he's like flirting a little bit kind of playing jokes with her yeah and i'm like you want her back so i don't bad. i think what we see in the preview with him propositioning katie for like a one night stand uh-huh. for old time's sake i feel like that's more in alignment with what tom schwartz really wants because he does not want a partner again he does not know how to be a partner. We see that when Jax confronts Katie. We'll get to that when we do. But like, he doesn't want to put in the effort to maintain a relationship uh, yeah. with a person of quality like Katie, but he definitely wants to bang her back out if he gets an opportunity to do so. See, I don't think, I think he doesn't want to be alone, but I don't think he wants to do the work to actually be in a relationship. I think you're right, right. on that. Like, he just doesn't want to be alone, though. And that's why he's now with a 24 year old girl because uh-huh. she doesn't know what she should require for herself because she's too young. Like, you get a woman of quality like katie or myself i dare say mm, yeah i know what i want honey of you course. better come correct if Commitment. we're going to be in a relationship like younger girls they're not there yet most of them not all of them yeah not me um but you know it had me thinking about tom schwartz and his broken dick <laughs> based on what katie said seasons ago talking about his broken dick and then i saw something about joe that crackhead crazy girl according to Katie (laughs) I saw something um, where Joe was asked on an Instagram live honey whether she sucked off Tom Schwartz (gasps) like who (laughs) who would have the audacity to ask the question (laughs) I would have wanted to ask I would have totally asked it (laughs) and Joe is like of course (gasps) we were together in a relationship and she said Tom's really good at sex (gasps) shut she said she's like i don't know what katie's talking about but he's really great at sex well that i mean you can relate to that 
What do you mean? With your own broken dick ex. <laughs> <laughs> you can relate to that. Listen, you I don't know why we're going that. there right now. Because it's the same situation. You're like, I don't understand it. What are you talking about? Well, I don't understand it when I look at Tom Schwartz. A at lot least of people think he's hot. my ex <laughs> had some game, some swag, okay? I mean, it was more like Jesse Lally, though. I swear Ew. to God, there's so many commonalities. I know, don't don't come for me I'm unless I send you. for I'm you. I'm judging you. Uh, but when you look at Tom now with his old man bleach <laughs> blonde hair and his bowling shirts or whatever <laughs> 1950s bullshit he's trying to rock right now, I'm like, yeah. I don't see you being a Lothario in bed, honey. A freak in the sheets, no. Oh my God, I've gotten so many DMs like online and everything and on the or IG, and even on my personal Instagram, I have this one friend that her and I talk about this shit, and Bravo, she loves Bravo. You have a friend other than me? Yeah. Who? You know her. Mm -hmm. She lives here, but I never, like, see her and everything. But anyway, she was telling me, she's like, yeah, I think Schwartz is, like, totally a conventionally attractive guy. Like, he's totally my type. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. really? I guess. That's great for you. (laughs) He looks like a soft guy, like a soft boy. Totes. Yeah. But if he's good in bed, if he's Mm -hmm. a Lothario with that broken dick, I mean... (laughs) yikes anyway i just wanted to pass that <laughs> on that is what joe said and i thought this scene with joe and it's not joe but um katie. schwartz and katie i thought that was really sweet yeah it was I very interesting yeah. yeah and then we have brock and sheena on their anniversary dinner and they're gonna bang that night totally are they in the hotel she brought toys butt plugs and stuff my thing is hi sweetie oh, hi oh, sweetie. my thing is didn't we see in a preview i don't know what, whether it was at the top of the season like this scene when they are at this dinner and sheena saying something like i don't know if we're gonna make it for forever yes that was in a preview that so was then, from that night. Yeah, and we don't see that. Why didn't we see that? I hate when editors do that. That's what I'm saying. I hate when editors put shit into previews and then don't show it. I know. It would have been a much more entertaining episode if we got to see some conflict yes. between Brock and Sheena, but no. I mean, it was kind of a wholesome dinner. They're just talking about their relationship, mm-hmm. how they need to spend more one-on-one time with each other because I got a baby and they ain't banging enough, you know, right. not having crazy enough sex. And then they're talking about kids and she breaks down because she's like, you know, you do so much for me. I want you to know that. And this is your second chance of being a father. And I'm snoring. Well, but- I don't care. I thought Brock breaking down about his kids. I, I thought that was kind of uh, interesting. I don't care. All right, fine. We won't talk about it then. <laughs> no, we can talk about no, it. No, I won't I'm talk just, about it. You don't no, care. No, I'm that. fine to talk about it. I'm just like, we've already talked about this, though. We talked about it last season. So we're talking kids? about it again. Yes, we've talked about this. Oh. How he left Australia to come to America to make a life for himself. I'm like, you're leaving another first world country to come to a different first world country so that you can make a life for yourself. Make it make sense. Why didn't? Why wouldn't you want to be with your kids? from your loins in your home country yeah. and do what you need to do over there yeah or whatever like we've already kind of talked about this um but yeah. I, so i was snoring but i i i'm sorry <laughs> we can talk about it <laughs> well no i just thought it was interesting that he reflected on it a little bit and he cried and he's like i i look back on my 19 year old self and i think i was a fucking idiot and i I'm trying my best to work on my relationship with my older two kids if they would have me. And so I kind of, you know, I felt for him there. At least he's acknowledging his mistakes okay. for being a bad father. But, you know, maybe it's all for a show. I don't know. Maybe it's all for a show. No, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just like, I don't know. I, I mean, he also had the domestic violence around the yeah, same true. time that yeah. he left. And I'm like, you know, we've, we've been over this. And I'm always going to be side-eyeing Brock. Totally. Yeah. And then we have Schwartz and Sandoval going to get tattoos and San- Schwartz talking about all of his horrible tattoo choices. Right. Katie's name on his ass, Lisa Vanderpump's uh-huh. name. Yeah. Why? I, because I think he lost a bet. Oh. And he had to do <laughs> okay. it. And he ended up doing it. And I don't think Katie was happy about it either. I wouldn't be. I'd be no. like, what the fuck are you doing? And now he's getting his dogs tattooed on his yeah. back, which I thought was kind of cute. Very cute. Sandoval's uh, falling out of his chair yeah. there was pretty funny. Fall harder. That was great. Yep. And then we have James and Allie getting facials. And talking about how James doesn't want to travel because he doesn't want to leave his animals, specifically Hippie, with just anybody. Right. And so Allie has a wedding of one of her very good friends in Ohio coming up. And James had, it sounds like, previously committed to go with her. Mm -hmm. But now he's having a bunch of second thoughts because Hippie has been traumatized already by being moved around and then thrown into the pound and rescued. And like, he just wants to give Hippie a good solid year 
of him being around, him getting comfortable in his house. And he's afraid and he yeah. wants to take care of his dog. And I think that's really sweet. I mean, we Me love too. animals here. Yeah, of course. I felt that too. And I'm like, Allie, kind of chill out a little bit. I mean, you can go to the wedding by yourself too. Mm -hmm. You can just fly over and let James stay at home. But she's like, well, you might, why won't you come with me? And she's getting mad because she's like, we can't just sit at home all the time and not travel or anything. And he's like, just give me a little bit. He just got hippie back. Right. Like two months ago. Right. So, I mean, I felt like she needed to just kind of chill. Yeah, but I can see her point too, because Totes. if you told me that you're going to take me to this wedding and like now all of a sudden two weeks out, you're going to say no, like that's going to disappoint me. That's lame. And yeah. also like, how long are we going to do this where you're going to be around all the time, never leaving your house? Right. So I, I can understand both sides of it, but it really did give me some insight into James and his depth of feeling yeah. for this animal that he does regard as his own fur baby his own child which I think really bonds him to Ariana yeah. who feels the same way about her animals I'm not going to go there in my mind with the litter box <laughs> yeah but like loves Maya love her, loves her dogs and cats and so I just thought it was really sweet me too he's a human being yeah somewhere shocking deep down there yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then we have like they showed the montage though of him being an asshole. Like they did. Did you see all that? I did. I was like, oh, James. spitting on Kristen's door. Yeah, screaming at this person or that person. Yeah, he was a pretty terrible person. But a lot of that was probably fueled by drugs and alcohol. Oh, for sure. And we've had a bunch of comments like on our YouTube and everything of people saying actually like Kristen was a piece of shit to him and was like abusive to him. So there's like a lot of stuff. I'm gonna have to go back and watch the older seasons of VPR. Yeah, I think you. Oh, they're so entertaining. I'm, I have. If to. you like the Valley, you'll like the earlier I'm seasons gonna. of VPR. Yeah, yeah. It's up. It's it's. There's a question about some of the things that went down between James and Kristen, but like the night of the wedding where Kristen hits him, um, it is reported that James hit her first. Whoa! And that there's footage of that that Bravo has not shown. Now I'm not sure if it's true, but we also have Raquel coming out on her podcast. Yeah, talking more about. A, a domestic violence situation that she was in, al alluding very strongly to it being James. And then we have Kristen talking on her podcast quite a bit as well, yeah. saying it's not alleged. This shit happened. He's a domestic abuser. Yikes. And so, yeah, that's still swirling around James. Yeah, it makes me worried for Allie if that's the case. I think if he starts drinking again or if he starts drugging again, that's when she's in danger, girl. 100%. Yeah. And then we have kind of like a random little scene of Tom and Ariana at their house. Tom, or Ariana's FaceTiming Dan while she's walking on the treadmill exercising. And they're talking about the upcoming San Francisco trip that I guess everybody's invited to because Kyle Chan or wh whoever he is mm -hmm. invited everybody for his whiskey thing. And Dan's going to be there. Yes. Which I'm very excited to yes. see. I can't wait. But then Sandoval is downstairs while Ariana's FaceTiming talking with realtors because i guess he is going to sell their house mm -hmm. and then he's looking for you know some dump to live in himself right but like a he was talking about a home with like two separate either mm -hmm. wings or like two separate buildings for him and for tom schwartz i yeah, guess okay. for the, yeah because they're gay okay. <laughs> <laughs> gay conspiracy <laughs> And then we have everybody showing up for brunch at Sir, hosted by Jax, and Lisa Vanderpump's there, and she's, like, not happy no. about it at all. Because... But are we really believing that she had no idea whatsoever that Jax was going to be hosting an event at her own restaurant? Right. I didn't really like, chill. buy that. Yeah. Yeah. And she's, like, all salty because Jax said a couple years ago on a podcast that Lisa Vanderpump has no purpose on the show. She's and just a I prop. agree. I agree too. I'm She's like, superfluous. She's inserting herself into these various situations and she does not need to be there. We all agree. Yeah. But to be fair, these are her restaurants and this is her show. Exactly. She created this show. She got all of these people famous. Yes. So I do agree with her when she confronts Jax about it when he shows up and she's like, Yeah, I hate you. <laughs> yeah. You're annoying and you talk shit about me. So I'm gonna talk shit back and i could have said some horrible things about you on this show and how you're not needed but i didn't even though she's saying it mm -hmm. right here i know that hurt jacks yeah that hurt him right down in his feel ball yeah and and we love that though i, I love He's it so egoic totally. and then on the after show they were kind of going in a little bit more on lvp especially Brittany, like how when she was pregnant 
They never heard hide nor hair from Lisa Vanderpump. Like she had not reached out for a long time. And then I think he spoke out about it, maybe on a podcast or something right after Cruz was born. And then within a couple of hours, they got a present from Lisa Vanderpump, which he was, I guess, alleging that it was performative. But I'm like, she's not... She's not required yeah. to keep up connection, communication with you and send you gifts. She doesn't fucking care about you. Right. She's not in your same age demographic. She's way more accomplished than you. She's already given you a leg up on this planet. Mm -hmm. If anybody should be communicating and making those attempts, it's you, Jax. No, for real. I'm like, nobody would have known who Jax Taylor was if it wasn't for VPR, right? Like, yes. You would have been a literal nobody, a fucking bartender at one of her restaurants. Yes. It wouldn't have mattered. So I thought that was kind of stupid. I'm like, why are people talking shit about Lisa Vanderpump? I'd be like bowing down to her if mm -hmm. I was getting rich from her show personally. And I got to go and stay at her mansion sometimes or like host my sperm donor parties. Right. You know what I mean? It's like she does so much for all these people. Granted, she is just a prop, though. <laughs> right. Prop. And she's definitely profiting off of them. Totally. But yeah, yeah, it was just an interesting scene. Very interesting. And then Jax heads over to the girls because like Ariana and Katie and all of them are sitting at their own table. And this is where he tells Ariana like, hey, Schwartz might move into your house. Like, <laughs> Schwartz had told him like five minutes earlier, like, don't say anything to anybody. But like, this is what me and Tom are talking about. And then he yeah. immediately... Goes and tells Ariana. Amazing. <laughs> I was like, it. I don't give a shit. Like, like if yeah, I can get out of this house, if I can get what I have coming to me, like he can do whatever the fuck he wants. And Something about Mojo Jojo and some infinity house. I don't know Something. what any of that means. I don't either. Just, I could care fucking less. <laughs> me too. And then James and Sandoval talk again a little bit and they're he's calling him out again mm -hmm. for being an egomaniac. And I'm just, I love that energy from james like yeah. just calling sandoval out on his bullshit yep because i do think ariana was right a couple episodes ago where she's like the men kind of have to call him out on his crap because he's not going to listen to anybody else but i don't think sandoval listens to the guys either right and i don't think he wants to go toe to toe with james because i think out of all of the guys in the group james is the one who does not give a fuck and will take it there 100 percent every single time and i just love james being i don't know 10 years younger than dom sandoval <laughs> giving him lessons on morality and how to be an adult <laughs> when james has his history of yes. like possible dv yes. and being a drunk asshole yep. too I, I think that's hilarious it's, honestly. it's amazing it's so great then we have the infamous scene with sheena shea and Sandoval. Yes. Arguing and yelling at each other. Yes. But the way that it starts is Sheena is telling the group like, hey, I want to leave. I want to go put Summer Moon down to bed. It's that time. Brock in his fucking pool or Hot in the pool. pink Speedo Dude. again. Same one as Tahoe. I am still opposed. I literally can't with him. <laughs> he starts getting fucking mad. He's yeah. like, why can't we just fucking have fun? Why can't we just stay here? Like, why do we have to leave? Let the nanny do it. And Sheena's like, yelling at him mm -hmm. in front of everybody being like i want to have this moment with our daughter right. so let's fucking leave like i want to i want to tuck my daughter in like we're not going to always be able to do this and so this is very important to me yeah and i thought that was totally valid mm -hmm. but then before leaving she goes to talk to sandoval and i think kyle chan's there yes who, nobody cares about him but she I think she kind of brings up like the song. She's like, have you right. heard my song yet? Apples. It's called Apples. Apples. I made a song. Apples. I'm going to sing it in San Francisco. Yeah. Kyle Chan. So have you heard my song yet? And Sandoval's like, yeah. And it fucking sucks. <laughs> He's like so well, he mad. Was, he was a little bit more low key than he was at Tom Tom. Like he got really mad at Tom Tom last week and he stormed out. Like he was a little bit more low key, but he's like, yeah, I don't appreciate the fact that you continue to profit off of my pain. Boohoo. And, you know, now there's a song. There were all of these podcasts. And Sheena, to her credit, is like, you know what? That's fair. Like, I really did profit a lot. Mm -hmm. I really, I don't want to use the word exploit because I don't recall what she said. But I, she exploited the issue so that totally, she could yeah. make a lot of money. But then we don't begrudge her for that because why wouldn't you? Right. But Tom's a little salty about it. And so yeah. she seems to acknowledge that. A little bit. And then she's like, but also I can write a song about this. Like, it's fine. And it did impact me. I'm it a did. part of this friend group. Yeah. And this 
had a huge impact on me. In fact, and she was talking earlier with the girls or somebody about her intrusive thoughts. I'm trying to remember. It was with Brittany, right, when they were sitting down about her intrusive thoughts and how that they're really bad. And so in this moment, she starts talking about how what Tom Sandoval did actually had a big effect on her because now when Brock walks into a room or Lala walks into a room, she notices how their eyes light up and she immediately thinks, well, is he going to do that to me? And she's like, and that's because of you, Tom Sandoval. And I object to that. Why? Because you have to take ownership and accountability over your own mental health. Oh, for sure. And just because Tom made this terrible mistake and he absolutely perpetrated the ultimate betrayal upon your best friend doesn't equate to your husband cheating on you as well for sure and should not lend to this kind of extreme anxiety in ocd that she seems to have and when she was talking to britney she was also mentioning that she had been put on zoloft right she was on it for like a month or something right and it helped her but it also made her really tired and because of all of these songs that she's cutting and podcasts that she's making (laughs) about scandal yeah she um had to stop taking it because she needed her energy But I was just like, hmm, you can't really put that on Tom Sandoval. Yes, it did inform your experience and you're struggling with it, but that doesn't make it his fault. Yeah. And I mean, he does call her out for it. He's like, you're not the victim. Like Mm -hmm. you're you're acting like you're more of a victim than Ariana, which I thought was a fair point. I mean, you're not a victim, Sheena. Like I I get that this is your friend and all that stuff. And I get that this was really hard for everybody. Raquel put out a restraining order on me. Well, because you hit her. (laughs) Exactly. That's why, though. It's because you probably actually hit her. So take responsibility for that, which you can't do because there would be legal ramifications. For sure. Yeah. So yeah i she was affected by it we get it but yeah you're not the victim so Mm -hmm. tom sandoval was right in that instance but then this is where tensions start to get really high and Mm -hmm. she starts raising her voice tom gets more and more defensive and i can't remember everything else that was said but the one comment that blows everything up is he tells her well you were the other woman in a relationship too and that's when she comes back Mm -hmm. fuck you tom Mm -hmm. and that was I was 21 years old when that happened and you know that I didn't know that he was married and she's screaming at him and Tom's I think yelling back at her although I'm not really hearing anything I just see Brock come up and put his hand on Tom's shoulder and push him away and kind of lean in and say look she was in her 20s man that's really different than you being in your 40s yeah like Brock got in the middle of that right away which I really respect I did too I don't think Tom Sandoval is going to be coming for Brock Davies anytime soon no ma'am on a physical level no ma'am but she does popping off she is upset yes which I mean I thought that was fair like I think it's fucked up that yes. every time Sandoval gets confronted with anybody's feelings about right. Sandoval he always has to turn it back around on other people and that's what everyone has a problem with it's like we've said this before you've said this on the pod that he can never sit in the responsibility like Mm -hmm. he can never sit in the shame of what he did he's always got to fucking put it back on he's always got to go into the archives and then he has the audacity to say something like well she's going into the archives it's been six months I'm like, what are you talking like, about? Jesus. The reverberations of what it is that you did are still quite evident Duh. in this group. Like, what do you mean just six months ago? Everybody is still feeling this, Tom. Just because you're over it and that's because you're dead inside, which you would have to be to do something like that to Ariana, doesn't mean that everybody else is as well. Exactly. So two things can be true at once. Yep. Sheena is playing the victim. Yep. And Sheena doesn't have the right method or process yet to, to help with her mentals because of she's got too much anxiety. Postpartum. Um, she's very worried. She's very fearful. She's got OCD. Like she needs help. And yes. that's probably lending itself to all of these other things that are making it hard for her to be the good old Sheena that we all know. So that is on her. Yeah. That's not Tom Sandoval. But at the same time, Tom Sandoval, Jesus Christ, can't you just take responsibility in a moment? For real. Can't you just say, look, I mean, I understand you made the song Apples and I don't necessarily like it, but that's your point of view and you have every right to do it. And let's just leave it there. Like, yeah. Why can't you be the bigger person? Because he's not. Yeah. <laughs> he's a piece of shit. Yeah. He's a 40 year old loser. He's always going to be cheating 42. on everybody. 42. Yeah. <laughs> Even worse. And he's got a bad cover band. Forty three. His, his like, ruined. His life is ruined because of Scandal. Because of his own 
mistake Mm -hmm. and he can't admit that to himself because to admit that to yourself would mean that you have to take responsibility Mm -hmm. and actually own up to your actions but to do that requires humility and a soul introspection yeah and the ability to like self-reflect right he just doesn't i'm i'm actually shocked at his inability to be able to self-reflect even on the most minute level like he can't do it at all all. Everybody no. else can see it. Even James can see it. Even Tom Schwartz can see it. Yeah. All of these people are telling him, like, you need to do it this way. You need to take ownership. But, like, he can't do it. And that's what's crazy is, like, this friend group is so fake and mm-hmm. so hypocritical and they're, like, vapid AF. And all of these fake-ass people are, like, looking at this piece of shit narc and they're like, dude, just say you're sorry. Right. Just take ownership for it. Like, it's not that hard. Just it, suck it up. And he can't do it. And so it's just interesting to me, like psychologically, all these fake ass people being like aghast that right. he can't take it. Himself. I actually think he's mad. I think he is very mad because when you look at his life before Scandival, he had um, Tom Sandoval and the most extras. And even uh. though he can't fucking sing and is pitchy as <laughs> fuck, he had so many crowds coming out to all of his shows. He was very successful. He had a new bar. He had a girl. Right. Yeah. He was popular. He was on this this show. But now after Scandaval, nobody's really coming out to see Tom Sandoval and the most extras unless it's to heckle <laughs> them. You're losing your fucking house. You no longer have the Queen Ariana. You don't have anybody. Everybody hates you. And internally you don't think it's your fault. Yeah. Internally you think you're justified to have cheated on your girlfriend. That's what's and so, so crazy. he's mad. That's why he can't help himself but to strike out and strike back at all these people because he didn't he doesn't think that he did anything wrong. That's what's so crazy to me. I'm like the he's like a case study. Like yeah. straight up. Like yes. wow, I can't I, how you can live your life in such denial is wild to me. But that's how the episode ends. Yes. Sheena leaves and she's pissed off crying she apologizes to Allie I'm sorry for yelling in your house and then it's to be continued right so I hope we get to see more of the fight maybe more people blow up at Sandoval I don't know I can't wait for San Francisco personally right well you want to see Dan and potentially a confrontation with Tom Sandoval yeah because I don't recall who said to Dan that they think Tom Sandoval is going to try and shake his hand yeah, I don't know. And Dan's remember. like, yeah, that, that's not going to happen. So, yeah. yeah. I definitely want to see how that goes down. I can't wait. I hope that's the next episode. Me as well. I hope we don't get like another filler episode before that. We might. <laughs> so, any final thoughts about Vin the Pumperu? Well, this episode was kind of lacking for me. Yeah, you know what? This whole season has been kind of lacking. Yeah. I really thought, Beatrice, that this was going to pop off. Like I know. The opportunity I think production had to make this such a killer season, uh, it's just going down the tubes. Totally. They really haven't availed themselves of like all the cool opportunities to get into these different storylines. I know. But you know what is popping off, though? The, the Valley, Valley, bitch! Which... Which- what I was just gonna say, we are, we're probably gonna say the same thing. Yeah, we are about to yeah. get into, <laughs> and we're about to talk about. But I just have to say that it's infinitely more entertaining than Vanderpump Rules. Like, if I'm a cast member like a Lala or a Katie on Vanderpump Rules, after having been on VPR for so many years, and I'm seeing how popular the Valley is season one, and what a dud this season of VPR is, I'd be feeling like shit. I know. I'm like, well, I wonder if Sheena the Clout Goblin and Brock are going to be like, can we go on the Valley? (laughs) No, we don't want you because you guys are producing yourself. And the reason that the Valley is so great is because you have enough people on the cast that aren't producing themselves they think they are like yeah. jesse and michelle think that they're producing themselves mm-hmm. but they're not because they don't know how to do it see vpr they've had year after year after year to learn how to do that that's, that's why point. it's fucking boring and that's why we have ariana saying like if i can be authentic if we can get real out here in these streets i will come back but if not that's a no yeah that's a good point mm-hmm. that they know how to produce themselves so yeah I, i'm loving the valley mm-hmm. i can't wait to get into that in this episode girl well then let's wind it down let's do it is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons beatrice well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review it really helps us grow the pod and get more famous so we really appreciate it god thank you very much (laughs) we will be back next week to talk seeking sister wife make sure that you are hanging out with us for that because it's a lot of fun it's very wacky but until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and Peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.